Welcome everyone to another performance clinic, Mastering Dynatrace Synthetics. This time it's about advanced concepts. Uh, just as I had last time, I have Philip Kastner with me. Hey, Philip. Hi, Andy. So, technical product manager at Dynatrace. How long with the company? Uh, for almost five years now. Five so years. Quite some time. Cool. Perfect. Uh, for those that are uh, watching this right now, you see all the links uh, where you can get Dynatrace. Uh, the recordings obviously will be online or you're watching it right now. Without further ado, I will cut my video stream now. Today we'll see a lot of live demos and I'm very excited about some advanced concepts. And Philip, I just hand it over to you. Oh yeah, the last thing, if you have questions, put them into the question feature of GoToWebinar. We will mo I will moderate them, so Philip and Chris, questions coming in, and I think it's okay to interrupt you. I will just interrupt you, otherwise we'll keep it to the end. Okay? Yeah. Folks, just make sure you ask the questions. Perfect. Thanks, Andy. So, let's get started. Um, so, today's performance clinic is about Synthetic, and Synthetic, just a reminder, is a part of, of the digital experience monitoring, so you usually uh, the, the main parts are real user monitoring, synthetic monitoring, and, and also session replay. And the main use cases of synthetic monitoring is really availability monitoring and uh, monitoring a performance baseline. And I think it, almost a month ago now, we did a, a getting started session on mastering standard synthetic. So you can see this session on YouTube if you're interested. It explains all the basics. So uh, what features, which kind of monitors are there, how do you configure them, which options you have, and so on. And today's performance clinic is about some advanced concepts. And I want to touch three topics, which are basically automation, so how you can make Synthetic a part of your unbreakable pipeline, uh, sharing, so how do you make uh, your monitoring data, your monitoring success, uh, building a performance culture, how do you make this visible within your company? And also we will take a closer look at how to analyze synthetic data. So the first thing is automation. So uh, I think the most important part here is really uh, if, if, if you're using Dynatrace and are using synthetic, usually you would start with the UI, have a look, okay, what can I do there? But at some point, and, and uh, we all know automation is important for success. You really want also to automate your synthetic strategy. So really don't forget to automate synthetic. Dynatrace offers all the all you need for this. So there are APIs for creating, configuring monitors. Uh, the, if you're thinking about click paths, which, which are uh, have several steps basically, we show the complete monitoring script uh, accessible via the UI and API, so you can fetch this, modify this to your needs. Um, and, and one thing that we, uh, for example, you have your browser monitors, but HTTP monitors, and one uh, very specific uh, use case in the HTTP monitoring section is um, a lot of microservices and, and in general, so one pattern is to having a health check endpoint or multiple health, health check endpoints. So whenever you deploy an application where you have those health check endpoints, it does make sense to also create an HTTP monitor, which is really monitoring and reacting to those health check endpoints. Again, something that can be easily done with the API, uh, you can put it this directly into your CI. And, th and the last point is really uh, the API also allows you uh, to feed additional information into Dynatrace, to so kind of annotating data um, with maybe maintenance windows that you have, but also custom events. And that will help the Dynatrace uh, AI engine basically to correlate this if you have a specific problem. Um, it always helps to have more more information in Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. And maybe feel like to just interject here, uh, because you know I love that you talked about the unbreakable pipeline. So here, what I really like, if you're pushing microservices through and your developers add new endpoints, you can also now allow them to define their tests that they want in the CI, put it into Git, and as part of your rollout, you not only deploy the new app and the new microservice, but you automatically deploy the test that goes with it as well for your production monitoring, for your, your health checks. So I think this is extremely powerful because it's fully automatable. Thank you. It's really cool. Yeah. And, and even if you think, so this is uh, one slide, so let me, so 
basically what this shows is a browser monitor and you have uh, running the same browser monitor uh, with a simulated mobile device, a tablet and a desktop device basically. And if you're thinking about uh, visually complete and speed index or modern metrics where the, the view port is basically the important thing, um, again you can first you can really easily automate setting up those three different kinds of uh, device profiles so you can automate this and even if you think about the um, a, about your pipeline basically you could for example add a, a kind of performance gate right so you mm -hmm. can say okay if this does not pass my performance limits or already after the deploy you can react to this right and maybe send out notification whatever your reaction will be Maybe can I just interject with one question here? Sure. Uh, and also as a reminder for folks that are online, feel free to ask questions through the question feature in GoToWebinar and then I'll, I will moderate them. So when you talk about a performance gate, is it also possible that I can create a test but then also trigger it from the outside to actually let a performance test run? Yes. So basically, yeah, you can enable, disable them via the API at any time. Usually the synthetic monitors run at the specific frequency, mm -hmm. so they, they are not really uh, created for on-demand tests mm -hmm. basically, but really monitoring on a specific frequency. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. well, I just wanted to clarify sure. this, right, because people should not uh, kind of misuse or, not, or have the impression that this is something that you can do for functional tests as well. I think it's really for the performance gates, for the availability monitoring, for the health monitoring once it's deployed in an environment that has to be stable. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I will show uh, this as an example then in the live demo how you would create this mm -hmm. real API. Okay. okay, so the, the second thing is, is sharing really. So if you're uh, building a performance culture, if you're already living a performance culture, you know, making really those important KPIs visible is, is, is key. And Dynatrace offers various tools how you can do that. And um, one thing is the concept of management zones, really sharing uh, specific parts of the environment with teams, um, across teams, across departments. Uh, one other way is, is dashboarding is always a great way. And this is something I will also show in the demo. So what offers Synthetic in terms of dashboarding? How can you put your Synthetic data on, on dashboards then can later be shared? Um, there are a lot of uh, out-of-the-box integrations, so where you can send out or where Dynatrace then automatically send out notifications, for example, uh, via Slack automatically, so you can really see, okay, uh, that helps your teams to um, work together on, on these performance topics. And also, um, so if you are, as I said, one, one key thing for digital experience monitoring, also real user monitoring, and there are also... Um, kind of business analytics so you can really link business metrics with performance metrics so for example if you think about improving visually complete you really want to know um, does the improvement the team made or in visually in the visually complete timing does it change something in my conversion goals for example do i see more logins do i see uh, more checkouts so depending on the application you have so uh, putting this on it on the on one dashboard next to each other uh, is really cool thing. Yes, and the last point, analyzing. So again, I will cover uh, a lot of these things in the demo later on. Um, but there you have kind of where you have uh, single synthetic runs where you can see the waterfall top findings out of the box analyzed by Dynatrace. Uh, I will show the multi-dimensional analysis, so how can you slice and dice your synthetic data uh, with this quite new view, which is only available since a couple of weeks. Uh, again, I, I already said, so enriching the synthetic data with custom events makes sense, especially in the analysis process where you can then see, okay, those events show up and help you to more quickly um, get to the root cause of a problem. And um, also from, from a synthetic monitor, so in, in Dynatrace in general, you could go from the server side to the synthetic monitor or the other way back. So I will talk uh, more about today starting from the synthetic side, but just to make sure you can do this in, in all directions basically uh, in Dynatrace. And then we will have a, a quick look at the root cause analysis for a more complex problem that you already see, I think, in the screenshot um, directly in the product. Okay, so demo demo time. I will jump right into Dynatrace. 
while you do, as a reminder, uh, if you have any questions, folks, just put them into the question feature of GoToWebinar and I will moderate them um, and uh, either write as you do the demo or later at the Q&A. And then, Philip, I just cut your webcam so we have a little more real estate here. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, one thing I want to <laughs> say before we start, so this is a, a deaf environment of ours, so uh, it might include some spoilers, so things you don't see yet, um, but uh, most of it should look uh, more or less the same as I will demo it. Okay, so the first thing uh, is really automation. So how would you go to, to automate the uh, monitor creation? And one thing I always like, even if it's about automation, is um, using first the UI, so really creating a monitor via the UI. Um, I, I showed this the last time. You have the option to create either a browser monitor and, or an HTTP monitor. We will go now with a, with a browser monitor. And this is our easy travel demo application. Just let me fetch this URL. And all you have to do is put in the, the URL. It will automatically uh, select the name for the monitor. Let's change this to birth clinic uh, for today. Uh, there are the default options. We can leave it like this for now. Uh, you, all you have to do is select the frequency and let's use three uh, different locations for this monitor. We'll see a summary, okay, which URL is the synthetic monitor uh, monitoring. Uh, what are the device profile and so on, and all you have to do is create the button. So this was now the main process via the UI. Uh, it's very easy, very straightforward, but if you're working with a, a huge environment, at some point uh, you will get tired of manually creating this, so how can you do the same thing with the API? And uh, you will find the uh, Dynatrace API Uh, environment and configuration API, um, but if you're using the API, you also need a token. So let me go from this direction. So here in the global settings, uh, there is the integration and there is the Dynatrace API uh, section. And in this section, you will uh, create a, a token and um, let me give the token a name and the uh, scope that you need to create and read synthetic monitors is this one and locations, so it's, you need to make sure that this one is enabled for the token you want to use for automating your synthetic uh, approach. And then click generate. So yeah, this is the one I just created. I will basically copy it to my clipboard. And one really cool thing about the Dynatrace API is the Dynatrace API Explorer. So if we go there uh, with the link, you will see um, all the endpoints the Dynatrace API offers. And you have the, the uh, basically documentation there. Um, so how does the model look for those API, API endpoints? And if you're working on synthetic and interested in synthetic, those three are now uh, mainly important. So uh, synthetic external is about pushing external synthetic data into Dynatrace. I will not cover this today. Uh, location and nodes is you get information about the uh, synthetic locations, private and public locations, and synthetic monitors is where you can manage your monitors. And here you have uh, a couple of endpoints, and one of them is getting uh, a list of synthetic monitors. And you can expand this and you see, okay, which parameters can I, can I put into this endpoint? Um, but so what is really cool about the API Explorer is that if you click here on the lock, and pass the token you just generated. You can try it out directly from this Explorer, the API call. So all you need to do is click try it out. I will not, so it, you can uh, specify, for example, management zones, tags, and so on. Um, I will just uh, execute it uh, for the complete environment. And directly in here in the, uh, in the API Explorer, you will see, okay, all, a list of all the monitors running in this uh, environment. And now let me share, search for the, uh, where is it? Yeah, so here is the PERP Clinic um, uh, browser monitor I just created. You will get the ID. You see it's a, it's a it's browser monitor. 
So really, if you want the first look uh, in, in the API, using the API Explorer directly is a good way. Um, if you want to do some more advanced things, um, it always makes sense to use some uh, API client. I have here go back so uh, maybe so yeah so um, I have here uh, in Somania uh, if it's there let me open it again hope now it's on the correct screen I can drag it over here. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to show you, okay, how to use uh, Insomania here in this case, but you can use any um, uh, API REST client basically to do this. For example, Postman is another popular one. And so the other endpoint we are now interested in is getting the specific information for this monitor I just created via the, the UI. Um, and all you need to do this is the more having the monitor ID. So I will copy copy this ID and maybe just use once more the API Explorer. Again, you can try it out. And this is now the ID of the specific monitor. And if you execute it, you will get the details. Um, but I will just copy the request URL we have here now to Insomania and say, okay, new request. Uh, let's name it get monitor, create, put it in there. And now if I would, will, I will click send. So what is missing is basically the authentication token. You will get something like unsupported authentication token. So let's add this uh, token to the header. So all you have to do is get in the setting the authorization token and and by the way in case people are, are wondering um, how this all works with the API we have a great documentation in general about how to use the API I also have some other performance clinics that are talking about how to use other parts of the API and uh, the question just comes up the recession is recorded and the recording will be made available in Diamond Trace University as well as on YouTube. So nothing is lost here in case you have to stop out early or if you want to share this with somebody else. And also that means a lot of questions are already coming in. Feel free to put the question into the question feature of GoToWebinar and I will moderate. Okay, so now I got all the detailed information for this one specific monitor and uh, you can see okay you have the name there you have the frequency you have the type it's browser monitor uh, you have information it was created from the UI basically and then here the script is basically the thing I mentioned uh, before so this is also a JSON object here uh, which defines okay this is a, a click path there are those uh, events basically um, and and yeah, they are defined here, uh, so you, you will see this. There are some, um, there is a, a documentation, what is allowed in the script and so on. And one um, final thing is basically what I wanted to do and let me maybe go back to the, to the UI. So this ID I had for this synthetic monitor, uh, you will also find it in, oops, click the wrong one, in the URL if you're looking in the UI, so you would, also find it as the parameter in the in the URL so and I it seems I used the wrong ID so this is why I'm going back here but this is basically what you see here mm -hmm. this is the entity ID and let me adapt this in my query okay so now this, this is the one I really created before uh, via the UI uh, you see it's a desktop, it's landscape, and so on. And I was talking about before that, uh, for example, it's uh, a kind of best practice if you're looking at Visually Complete to really monitor with different screen sizes. So I want to show how can you create now uh, two additional monitors uh, to this with, with different screen sizes um, via the API. And I will just duplicate this request and change it to post request and also rename it to create monitor. 
So I will, you can basically just uh, use the, the response from the get monitor and use it as a JSON payload for the post request. Uh, you can remove the entity ID because you uh, basically want to create a new monitor and you can remove the monitor from the request URL. We will give it a different name, for example, uh, mobile, because it should simulate a mobile device. And now you have your device name. And, and usually you can go to the uh, API Explorer and see, okay, which values are allowed there and so on. In the documentation, it's all there. But I wanted to show you today a different way, um, which I really like is uh, basically going in the settings via the UI of the monitor. And you have here the monitor script. So this is in the payload. And you directly see this here with uh, editor. And, and here you have uh, the device name. And if you press uh, control space or, or uh, Apple space, uh, other uh, completely show up and shows you all the devices we su support in the monitor script. And for example, let's use uh, iPhone X here. And so this is a value that's valid. And I will just go back to the JSON of the REST call. I just change it to uh, Apple iPhone X and I will post this request. So let's see if it works. Yes, so it, it worked and what it returns is now the new entity ID of the created monitor. So we can jump back to the list. And now if I search for Perf Clinic, not only the one I created via the uh, UI is showing up, which is already uh, seeing data, but also the mobile one is showing up. And, and so what you, what you really can do here is put the third device here, then you can kind of replicate what I had before. Um, you can, uh, you, what we also see is, okay, which locations it's running on, how is the an anomaly detection uh, handled, so how is it configured for outages, uh, is the alert configured for global or local outage, what are the thresholds configured, so here they are non-configured, but if you have one, you can do this via the API. Uh, you, you have the, what, what is that as a key performance monitor from a, a key performance metric from a monitor, so all these things you can change. Also, tagging is an, uh, is an uh, important concept mm -hmm. in Dynatrace. So uh, if I would add a tag here in the UI and say uh, perf clinic and edit here, and let me jump back to the get monitor call I had before, you will see um, that this perf clinic tag is now showing up in the, in the response of the, uh, of the synthetic monitor. Perfect. There's also uh, some questions coming in around tagging, so thanks for showing that. Also management zones, that means as we can tag synthetic tests, we can obviously assign them to management zones as well, and therefore the alerting works exactly that way. Yeah. Exactly. So I can really jump over quickly to the management zones. So uh, these are in the global settings, preferences, management zones. And what you can do here is defining, uh, for example, a new, let's have a new management zone, call it performance clinic because this is something I wanted to show anyway. Um, so now you have the option to say, okay, I have a rule for my synthetic monitors and for browser monitors and you can see, okay, every browser monitor that is tagged um, with Perf Clinic, for example, should uh, match into this management zone. And there, there is even a preview button, so you can click it and you will see, okay, those um, monitors are, are tagged with performance clinic and um, you can create this rule. So whenever now you create a new monitor via the API uh, that has the tag performance clinic, it will automatically match in your uh, management zone. Okay, so I'm just thinking if there was... I have one question just because it comes in and also for clarification, uh, there's, there's a couple of people I say they have currently some other synthetic testing tools and they would like to send data to Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. So I know we have the external synthetic API where we can actually send results about individual external runs to Dynatrace mm -hmm. so that they would show up kind of like as our synthetic results show up. Exactly. Now, um, if we want to send the status of a test or let's say an external synthetic test is detecting a problem, yep. should we do this through the external API where we send the results mm -hmm. and the status or is it also possible 
we'll just use the events API to say an availability issue was detected by an external tool. Yeah, so both is basically possible. So if you want to have the uh, synthetic data itself also in Dynatrace, mm -hmm. I, I would suggest to use the external uh, synthetic API, so really pushing the results as well as the alerts into mm -hmm. Dynatrace, so mm -hmm. then it's really connected to this entity. If you are only interested about the alerts, uh, I would suggest to use the events API mm -hmm. and send this in via the API. Mm -hmm. The cool thing obviously is having all the data is, especially with root cause diagnostics, you can really go from synthetic test all the way down to the backend root cause and, you know, in case there's a problem in the backend. So yeah, um, thank okay. you. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and and basically this, the same thing uh, applies to HTTP monitor. So uh, if you if you fetch, well, let me uh, show this for one H HTTP monitor we have here, which is querying the um, Easy Travel API, for example. I have the idea again. I will just get it from the URL in this case. I can use the same uh, get request, just replace the ID with the HTTP. Uh, check ID basically here and uh, and send it and then you get all the information about the HTTP monitor. It looks very similar here. You have also some meta information. You have the script itself. Again, you can, uh, as I said at the beginning, if you have some um, uh, endpoint for a health check uh, or an API endpoint you want to monitor, you can just um, create these monitors via the API uh, with a fresh deployment and so on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as it just fits, I think, I know I think we've covered this also in the, in the basic tutorial, but somebody's asking, could we use these HTTP tests for creating uh, entries into, in a queue, right, if you have a queuing system? And, and then my answer, and correct me if I'm wrong, my answer mm -hmm. was most queuing systems these days have a REST endpoint. So that means you can create a synthetic script that is just making a REST call to that endpoint and therefore filling a queue on a scheduled basis. Exactly. Right. So if it's possible, possible via an uh, HTTP request, so if there is an API, yeah, you could do this. Yeah, and then I know this is something you will announce later on, uh, multi-step HTTP requests, I think that's also something that we have yep. coming up. Exactly, so this is something that's uh, coming up soon. Um, we will have an additional uh, performance clinic on this topic mm -hmm. uh, where we can show more. Maybe someone already saw it here, so... <laughs> Uh, I think on the HTTP monitors here in the dev environment, it's already showing up. So there are, for example, two uh, requests in this HTTP monitor with UK. There are two GET requests that are executed. You will have the possibility to have a pre-request uh, script, post-request script, so you can pass parameters from one uh, request to the next one. So, so really exciting things uh, on, on this side. Perfect. Cool. And as you said, uh, there will be a separate performance clinic uh, in the June time frame, I believe. Um, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that was the API part. I, I think I, I could demonstrate how, how quickly you can get started with the, with the Dynatrace API and this, especially with the Synthetic API. Uh, so there is not or no magic behind this mm -hmm. um, and, and nothing that stops you from really automating your mm -hmm. approach. Do me another favor because I just sent the link to a couple of people here. Can you open up a browser tab and just quickly search for Dynatrace Synthetic API so that people actually see how easy it is to also find the documentation? And it's, it's all there. So that's pretty cool. Yep. So this is the Synthetic API. Um, exactly. And here you will got also uh, the yeah, well, basically it explains what you can do, which endpoints are there. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, the API Explorer is also very helpful in in in, in terms of this. Um, yeah. Okay, so then uh, let's let's jump over to the uh, topic where it's a building a performance culture, exposing your results, exposing your success. Um, and, and one way I wanted to show is really how, what offers Dynatrace Synthetic in terms of dashboarding. So if you um, go to dashboards, you can create a new dashboard and just go to webinar, always a little bit <laughs> in my way. <laughs> so let's call the dashboard clinic and create it. So now you have uh, different out-of-the-box dashboard tiles and if you 
put in synthetic here, you will see, okay, there's one for browser monitors, HTTP monitors, uh, synthetic monitor health, so just push it this one here, which gives you an overview about all your monitors and the current status. Are there problems detected on these monitors? Um, let's add one for a browser monitor. You can then choose the, 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 the browser monitor you want to show. Let's go with the one that's already set up, showing some data. Uh, same thing is creating one for HTTP monitor. So uh, if I have done this uh, API, so this uh, is really easy to, to uh, get uh, those tiles. So these are out of the box tiles. There is also one, as we mentioned, it, the external monitor will even then show the external synthetic data on your dashboards. And um, one other thing is so you can now, um, if you say, okay, you want to show, um, now let me do something else. So if, if you want to show a specific metric, so how would you do that? And the way to do this is uh, going basically to the custom charting. And there you have all the metrics we capture on the synthetic area available. And and <laughs> I mentioned spoilers before, this is already showing our new custom charting um, and our uh, new metric registry. So I think you will hear about this soon. Um, in, in your case, you will only have one drop-down box uh, which shows, shows the synthetic uh, metrics you will see there. Uh, we will add well, we will expose, so these metrics are already captured, but we will expose a lot of new metrics in the synthetic area for you. Um, this will, I think, maybe four weeks from now, uh, being in your, available for you. And I want to show you, for example, uh, visually complete for uh, a browser monitor for, com uh, for, for load actions. And uh, what I see now here is all the, uh, all the, uh, all the monitors but I'm interested in ones that are tagged with screen size. So this is something, uh, basically, what we had before, the three different screen sizes. Um, they are running uh, on, a, on a large uh, device, on a smaller one, and a medium in terms of screen size. And um, so now I'm only seeing those. And um, the, the dots here, this is a small bug on the dev environment, but let's, uh, so this should be usually connected. Um, but if I go now back to seven days, you will have a line and see, okay, uh, uh, something you would expect if you have a large uh, device visually complete uh, is or is potentially higher um, as there is more to render uh, uh, on the screen mm -hmm. and not so much uh, be beyond default, basically. Um, and the small and the medium have a very similar uh, visually complete in this case. And so, if, so say you are working on this application, you are looking at the performance of Visual Complete, uh, you would basically uh, go to a custom chart and create this chart, and then you could put it on the dashboard. Uh, you can change the size a little bit to have this look a little bit better. Um, and let me do this uh, once more really quickly because, so actually, I can just put it in here, so I can search for visually complete. And where was it? Uh, exactly, so for the complete browser monitor. Uh, there are different modes here. So this is uh, time series data, but you can also, if we fit on the screen sizes again, you can also switch to a top list um, view that I also uh, like very much. So this is only for the three monitors. You can do this with more. Um, but you can pin it here as well and say, uh, put it maybe next to here. Then you would get this um, same thing, hopefully. I'm not sure what, uh, now it's showing up. Uh, the same view here and see, okay, we visually complete. For example, if you now want to work uh, improving visually complete uh, for larger screen sizes on your application, uh, this would be really a good thing to visualize it on the dashboard. Cool. Uh, there's a couple of questions that are coming in right now. Uh, scatter plot. Are you planning on a scatter plot chart type as well, like they had on the old or the classic synthetic part? Yes. Um, we will uh, introduce a, a scatter plot in the multi-dimensional analysis, so uh, not uh, in the custom charting itself, but in the analysis view. So I can refer back later on if we have a look at the uh, analysis view, um, where you really look at single executions of the monitor.
Mm -hmm. Now, the other question is, can, I think that the answer is yes, but can we chart uh, metrics from individual actions? That means mm -hmm. uh, not, not overall, but yeah. individual actions as well. I guess that's, that's true. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, so currently uh, you, you cannot yet, but what, what I showed you in the class, and I can go back to this here, mm -hmm. uh, you will be able to do this um, and, and really uh, chart specific events or, or also named kind of steps. Mm -hmm. uh, for your browser monitors. And this was why Visually Complete was showing up here a couple of times. Is basically you have here Synthetic Monitor, Browser Monitors, Event Visually Complete, and you have Synthetic Monitor, Browser Visually Complete. So this is for the complete monitor, and this is for one event. And then you can really uh, chat for one specific uh, mm -hmm. event step of your monitor. Perfect. You can see them here then. That's awesome. And then because we are kind of came in at the same time, uh, Matthew is asking, uh, can we see HTTP response sizes? And I, I, I guess we can, right, the size? Yes, so uh, in the custom charting as well, but this is also something we show in the details view of an HTTP monitor. So if we look into one of those, uh, you can see here the response size. Um, can you also alert on that? Is there an option where you uh, say thresholds? Yep, uh, that's currently not available, um, but we are working on it. Cool, perfect. Okay, and uh, kind of, if we go back to our performance clinic dashboard, the last thing I wanted to show um, is we are limited with time, so there's really a lot to show. Um, because I was mentioning this, it it's always makes sense if you're working on improving uh, visually complete, really looking at the, at the business side as well. So what you could do, for example, is here um, having a, a conversion goal where you where you think your theory is okay this will have an impact on one of my conversion goals putting this on the dashboard so this is the easy travel example application it's for example a new registered user um, and really having this next to each other and say okay does this somehow influence my uh, sign up uh, the improvement is, is definitely if it does a, a very uh, cool story to share with the team and see okay this is why we are investing in the performance here. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the other thing, as I said, yeah, management zones, you can find them here. This applies to the dashboard. So if I switch now for, to the performance clinic, um, you will see, okay, this data is not showing up anymore because they are not matching into the mm -hmm. performance clinic uh, management zone. Um, again, all these uh, creating management zones and, and using them can be fully automated and make sense uh, to really automate this and invest in the automation here. Um, and the last point about the sharing part was really the integrations we have. So this is something I will just quickly show you where to find it. So there is the same thing where integration with the API lives. There's problem notifications. So you can set up notifications uh, for all those uh, different notification systems out of the box. There's even a custom integration if this basically if you have a webhook you want to um, post those uh, notifications too. It's also possible mention Slack, so really having this in your team channel, for example, and reacting um, to changes here would help. There's also alerting profiles where you can then go into more details which uh, notifications should reach which teams and so on, so how they are directed and so on. So there. Uh, a lot of things there out of the box, um, um, but that really helps if you're working in, in, in teams on, on performance, uh, that makes your life easier. Okay, and now just one last question on the mm -hmm. API, because it just came in from Ralph. Mm -hmm. uh, are there, is there an API where we can and actually pull the actual results, or uh, not just the time series, but the result yeah. as well. Yeah. So, so this is uh, a, a very, very good question because I was just showing how you create monitors and, and modify monitors, but you are definitely also interested in the results. And uh, you mentioned the time series, so um, let me have the API Explorer still open. Yeah. So, time series data can be found here, and 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 uh, to be clear, so this is aggregated data, right? So long term um, data aggregated and and I, I a lot of times I get questions okay where do I find my specific runs right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can get some of this data uh, via the user sessions query language so oh. this is showing up because it's really the same concept for real user monitoring and synthetic monitoring so everything uh, a browser monitor creates a session 
Mm -hmm. uh, what you do not find there is HTTP monitors for HTTP monitors is currently not possible to get the individual results. Mm -hmm. um, but I always say like, I mean, it depends on your use case, right? But usually looking at the time series data is what you would like to do because Dynatrace is already aggregating uh, this data for you, right? So, I mean, you if you want to look at one, usually you don't look at one specific um, data point if you look at performance, if your performance baseline. And really fetching this via the time series where you can say, okay, I want to have it aggregated to an hour, to a day, um, or maybe even a week if you are doing a, a, a weekly report, for example, mm -hmm. is more helpful. But yeah, the, the whole user session, so actually in the user session uh, query language, uh, um, I'm not sure if there was a performance clinic on this already, but <laughs> I think yeah, it would be, there was already. Uh, yeah, but even with Klaus, he showed it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what you what what you can do is basically uh, there is a button analyze uh, synthetic sessions. So this brings you over to the user session view for this one specific monitor, mm -hmm. and uh, you can switch to the user session query. You would see uh, immediately how this query looks. Mm -hmm. um, and and basically what what else you could have there and 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 there it's then really about single sessions or execution. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think the use case here is about uh, extracting the data so that other tools that they already have in place can analyze the data because they already have some uh, external calculations. Yeah. So uh, so I think then it would be really so it's, if it's about browser monitors as well. Really look into user session query. There's mm -hmm. also a user session export where you can stream out this mm -hmm. data mm -hmm. uh, and analyze. Or the tools you have in place. Yes. And for HTTP monitors, it might be coming in the future. Yes. Yeah. Currently, only time series data is available, um, but uh, we will definitely also have uh, mm -hmm. some similar concept there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, we are already a little bit short on time, so let's okay. see. Uh, analysis part. So uh, there are always uh, a lot of different ways to how to start your analysis, and depending on what you want to exactly analyze. Um, one thing, so I wanted to show is let's remove this, uh, or maybe let's use the easy travel management zone. So here, are all the easy travel tests matching into it. Um, so looking maybe at this uh, monitor of the easy travel home, which so one thing you can do if you want to analyze this is uh, really so this is uh, an overview of the monitor, but there's uh, an analyze uh, availability. It, it changes depending on what you select in the infographic. And you have kind of three different types how you want to analyze this data for this monitor. You can go for availability, performance, and errors. And so again, this on the top is time series data, aggregated data for performance, also for errors and so on. And at the bottom, you have the single executions. And if you uh, open one of those executions, and so this is kind of um, the, the kind of most detailed view, right, mm -hmm. is the waterfall, and the, you have a waterfall for every event uh, step of your monitor, and and one uh, cool thing is is if you if you would just generally want to look at the, the performance of your monitor, is this top finding section here in in the waterfall. So there, Dynatrace tells you, okay, uh, you have uh, uncompressed resources, you have slow first party resources. What is the transfer size? Uh, what actually does impact visually complete? So, and you can click all of these top findings, and it will automatically highlight um, uh, the resources that are connected to this um, to this finding. You can see, okay, there's some uncompressed JavaScript, so that might make sense that you can uh, compress this. Uh, you can look at visually complete. So, which resources were impacting my visually complete uh, time? So, the uh, for example, here, logo, hero, background image, so all this is, is then shown here. And so this is definitely something where you want to look at uh, if you're interested in uh, performance of a monitor, having a first look at this uh, specific findings. And the waterfall, you can uh, group it uh, in different ways. Usually uh, it's grouped by resources, you can uh, group it by resource type, uh, then what will show up is your yeah, first party resources, CS, script, and image. So there are some top categories. We are always kind of splitting document requests here and XHR requests. Um, uh, the reason here is really usually these are the more important requests compared to all the resources, images you're loading. 
uh, is really uh, this XHR and document requests you want to have maybe a look first and so on. Mm -hmm. And what I also see here, and that might be interesting for people that only have a synthetic approach to uh, to monitoring, I think if you hover over these individual items, you actually see the pure path. So that means from here you have the option to also drill down into the server side into a pure path in case you have the app instrumented with the Dynatrix One agent. Right? I mean, that's, exactly. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. So here you can really directly jump to the server side. Mm -hmm. yeah, and one, one last thing on the waterfall side I wanted to show is you can also say, okay, I want to focus on visually complete, for example, and then uh, it will scale up a little bit to exactly mm -hmm. the visual complete metric. The other thing will get cut, and then you see, okay, okay, what is really happening before visually complete uh, is triggered there. And then uh, kind of this uh, most detailed information going backwards. Um, so you have your uh, analyzers, multi-dimension analyzers view here. Uh, you can really analyze across different uh, dimensions. So you can say, okay, I want to look only at data from uh, North Virginia here, from the North Virginia location. And I'm not sure what time frame do I have here, last six hours. So if, uh, if you go back to last seven days, for example, uh, you can see this. You can say, okay, I want to look at load action, XSR actions. Uh, I want to change the metrics. So really looking at time to first byte, and you will see, okay, uh, so this is already interesting. So it, uh, time to first byte is, is pretty stable here, um, and there you had some issues in the time to first byte. There was also a problem um, uh, identified here. So this is something you might want to look at if no, you not have already done because there was a problem generated. Um, and again here, so if there is an error, we, we show this execution then also has failed. Uh, you can open it again. Uh, this is also something here where you, if you analyze your synthetic data, would like to look at this, is really this error code here, the failure reason you have, the failure URL, where, where did it fail, you will get an image in the failure case, expected case, you can compare this. Um, yeah, so really the multi-dimension analysis, again, if you if you go to errors, you have then a few, okay, how, which errors did uh, occur over time, and this was uh, regarding the uh, question with the scatter plot. So this is exactly where the scatter plot will lift. And here you have it now in a table format, but at the top you will see a scatter plot, mm -hmm. which shows you in each individual result, and then it will be very easy for you to see some outliers, yeah. which might be covered in the time series data somehow um, with the aggregation, right? So then it really you can pick this one outlier, have a look at, at that. Yeah, and really the, the, the last thing is I, I, I promised to show you a little mm -hmm. more complex um, uh, problem is, where's it? I was it discarded while I was going through this demo environment. Yeah, so here, I think this is a, a pretty cool one. Um, yeah, you can see really the, the, the power of the uh, Dyna, Dynatrace AI uh, connecting those different entities, and this is, uh, you can see, okay, there are two uh, applications impacted. In play applications, uh, here you can see it's a synthetic monitor in the web application, so synthetic monitors are uh, here counted as application, which makes sense because they are kind of, all these, the browser monitors are monitoring a, an application, and if you don't have the run side to it, uh, it's really a separate application uh, the AI works on. And yet there was an issue with the login, so this was affected. You really see the business impact, how many users were affected during this time frame. You can go to the specific sessions. Uh, Dynatrace uh, tells you the, the root cause, which was here, obviously, a, a CPU saturation on the uh, a business backend. In this case, uh, you will get this visual resolution path. And uh, if you click here then on, on this, uh, for example, if you're interested in the synthetic part, if you click it, you will go automatically into the uh, details view of this monitor. It will show you the um, affected metrics, basically here the availability. Uh, you can see, okay, this is what's the problem time frame. Um, and what you would do here is, again, to really look into this problem, drill down again in the analysis view, and you will see all those uh, failed executions there. Very cool. Yeah, I think we're waiting on this. But while this, while yeah. you guys are wait, while you're waiting, um, there's a there's a couple of just comments because somebody's asking about 
uh, private browsing when that is if you're covering this I think we're covering it in a separate performance clinic and we talk about private browsers yes yeah. so exactly so one one thing is if you want to uh, monitor internal applications where our public locations don't have access to mm -hmm. uh, we are offering private browser monitors uh, and also private HTTP monitors private locations private HTTP monitors are already released uh, private browser monitors are upcoming mm -hmm. uh, and Jan uh, will do a separate performance clinic uh, especially on this topic uh, to show you how easy it is to set up such a private locations mm -hmm. um, yeah I think so there's uh, definitely more uh, but I think we should maybe take a look at, at the questions yeah there are yeah there's like, I mean we have already answered I think uh, a lot of them but a couple of more came in uh, the Coming actually back to the, the browser monitoring functionality for private node agents, uh, the question from Tom is, uh, how do you use a URL that's internal when the first step checks for availability from an external location? Uh, good, good question. So what if you create a monitor, uh, what you will have in the UI is uh, basically a check if a monitor, uh, if a URL is reachable. Of on, and this, uh, I think, was it Tom? Was Tom, yeah. Tom, so what, that's maybe what Tom means. So let's do something like does not exist. So oh, this is really checked uh, for, and it says you, uh, it's unable to access this URL and, and please enter a publicly available URL. And it might not be available from the monitor location. But this is more or less only a warning. So you can go on and continue and then really have uh, so a one locations so here you can see there are two private locations. You can mm -hmm. uh, so they might be able to reach this, and you can still go on. So this is more or less just a warning. Hey, are, are you sure uh, this is available? Um, kind of a sanity check. Yeah, no, it's perfect. I think Tom that answers the question, so it's really just a, a helper. Um, the next question uh, is har file support. Are we able to extract har files? Are we able to compare two runs? Is that yep. possible? Uh, currently, you are not able to download or, or get the HAR file. Uh, it's something we have on, on the roadmap, however. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, next question is, uh, is it possible to see an issue related to connectivity index ratio? I'm not 100% sure, but I think the, the question is if there's a connectivity issue between, I guess, the, the browser and the, the, uh, the backend system. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, that's, that's part of the, of our standard analysis, I would almost say, right, if there's a connectivity issue. Yes, exactly. So what, what you might see, I mean, depends on which kind of connectivity issue, right? So if, the, if it's really, I don't know, if there is a DNS issue, right, uh, the browser monitor would tell you. Mm -hmm. um, if there is some network timeout, the browser mm -hmm. monitor will tell you. Mm -hmm. So, yes, go to the definitely detect that. Yeah, and then it would also create a problem. And then, uh, you know, the problem you will see, is it a front-end problem that the browser reports, or is it a back-end problem because you have some bad running code and it just takes too long and, and your servers are overloaded. Uh, the other question is, um, can you allocate them with management zones? I think we answered that. Uh, she, uh, Julie is asking, I'm trying to replicate a classic environment where I allocate them in the child account. Um, she says she might not might not be the right place for this question, um, but that was so. I I think the answer to this one is no. So you have really for one uh, environment, uh, you have a specific amount of dam units, and you could not say okay, this management zone uh, can use this specific amount of dam units. You could have multiple environments and then kind of distribute the dam units between those environments. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, depending also if you're on SaaS or managed, on, on managed you can uh, configure this basically on your own and say, okay, this uh, environment, for example, is not allowed to have any synthetic monitors or is allowed this specific amount, consuming this specific amount of DEM units. Mm -hmm. Is it planned um, somehow in the future to assign DEM units to an application maybe? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of it, but <laughs> mm -hmm. don't. Don't quote me on this yeah. one. But you can allocate it by environment at least exactly. right, as, yeah. well, as possible. Yes. So that means if you have a uh, if you have a dynamically managed cluster and you have multiple environments, you can assign them by environment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So truly, hopefully, that answers uh, your question. Awesome. 
Uh, I think when I mean, we answered, I think most, yeah, she said it's good. Um, we, we answered a lot of the questions as we were going through the whole thing. Um, let's 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 uh, wrap it up maybe. Um, I think you have a couple, like one or two more slides that we quickly want to show. Folks, a reminder, there's a lot of additional performance clinics coming um, that you want to be aware of. Yeah, so I think Andy already said, so it's, if you're not uh, already using Dynatrace, uh, go to, to uh, the SAS trial sign up. Uh, so there's yeah, a, a trial which you get started right away. You can do exactly what I showed you today. Um, you can set up a synthetic monitor. You can go ahead and automate this monitor. This is also the link I uh, was uh, opening before on the synthetic API. Uh, this recording, uh, Andy already said as well, will be available on YouTube on, on the Dynatrace University. And uh, as I said, so there will be a, a follow-up session, especially on the private uh, synthetic location topic. Mm -hmm. So we are aware that a lot of you are interested in, in, in this specific topic. We will do a separate session on this, which shows you how you can set up a, a location. It's really, uh, if you're familiar with Dynatrace, uh, a location is uh, deployed via an active gate, and uh, it's really straightforward to, to set it up, but it kind of was too much for this session today, so we decided to do a, a follow-up on, on this one. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the, uh, the clinic, uh, the, the private center location is not yet listed, but it will be listed in the next couple of days, um, because we're just getting everything set up. Um, Maybe a last word to next week, whoever is going to be in Barcelona, we have a perform event coming up. Um, so that means, you know, make sure in case you make it to Barcelona. I think, maybe, yeah. yeah, here we go. Yeah, Barcelona is always a great place to be. And if it's not Barcelona that you can make it, check out the regional events. We have regional events throughout the world. So make sure you, you check it out. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're in Barcelona, uh, I will be at the DEM Tower, basically. I would be very happy if you drop by and, and, and have any synthetic questions. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Philip. Thanks. Really amazing. A lot of questions that came in, a lot of people actually that attended. That's pretty cool. And stay all the way until the end. Stay tuned for more. Thank you. Thank you.